Wiser here, coming to you with the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Oh, uh, this was a ranged matchup versus WHF2. Um, we actually just had a uh, recent uh, kind of a crummy, uh, crummy effort on our part to WHF1. Um, but these guys are all stars of WHF2 as well. So I also today have a special guest star in the recap with me. Uh, McGrady and I were uh, chatting about a future sort of uh, tutorial episode episode we're going to be doing uh and i said hey why don't you uh hang out while i do the recap so grady is here live with me how you doing buddy hey wider happy to be here first time in your channel absolutely um i'm i'm actually uh i'm sorry i haven't had you on earlier you're uh, obviously a huge integral part of our whole clan family and system so uh glad to have you on uh let's just jump right in and check out what happened in this warp so I'm looking at uh, a percentage victory to 2.0. Now, this definitely was not overall our best effort. Um, our Town Hall 9s didn't do really really as well as we had hoped. Um, we did have some really nice attacks in there, but uh, it was uh, we definitely <laughs> ended up using quite a few more bullies than we had hoped for, unfortunately. A uh, couple of town versus, uh, 10 versus 10 trips. Just checking over our side right now. Um, you know, they got twos on all of our... Uh, all of our 11s, they left two uh, 10s on the board and cleaned it up all the way down. Uh, so good for them. <clears throat> we had one beastly south fence uh, 11 versus 11 trip. Sorry, Grady, we're going to have to add that on. I forgot to mention that in the attacks. We were showing number three at the end. Absolutely. Um, but as well, uh, moving down, you know, had a few really nice bullies on their top 10s there. We did leave a few 10s uh, on the board there. Uh, but had, I believe, Jamie, or Harley Quinn, I should say, um, and Pauly J, actually, with 10 versus 10 trips. They hit some nice attacks. We're going to jump right in there and see those, uh, and cleaned it up, but unfortunately, he used way more bullies than we had wanted. So we sort of, I, I don't want to say lucked out, but uh, came away with the, by the skin of our teeth with this one. Um, but let's uh, let's start with number 39, Grady, your hit. And I'm going to let you take this one away since it's your hit. You'll probably have some better insight on uh, on what you were thinking uh, during the attack. So I'm just going to kind of make some comments going in. So let's go check that out right now. Okay. Beautiful. So the stoned Go Hobo is uh, a theme I'm seeing. Yes, that's the theme of the war, it seems, like mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, when we were preparing this raid. The thing is, when I started the, the raid, I was thinking that there was a very wide open um, part I could exploit. And uh, being this a cleanup attack, I know where the Tessas were, where the spring traps were, where the bombs were. So I tried to exploit that with my entry, with what with was, uh, was completely different from what my, my fellow clanmates did. So um, I wall break in just in the middle as soon as I know I can. Um, send my bowlers in and I forget uh, <laughs> a builder set at six that uh, eventually oh, yes. won't, won't be a problem. But um, <laughs> I read in, I, I use my poisons, both of them, um, just to be sure. Like I see people sometimes not using them, kind of trying to swag them. Mm -hmm. And I say never, never do that. Just I rather send them both and try and preserve health for my troops uh, by doing so. Yeah, just just get them down, right? I mean, even if even if something like a golem yeah. comes out, drop one, slow it down, right? Um, you know, I liked your entry as well because all the low hit point buildings are so easy to get in there. So your bowlers are coming in from nine o'clock now. Or sorry, your hogs are coming in from nine o'clock now. No yeah. danger at all. At all. Since I know where the spring traps were, I, I used that when deploying them. Uh, maybe I deployed them uh, like a, a little too much uh, down there. I, I could have saved a couple uh, more up top uh, to be a little bit more efficient, but eventually it worked out. Um, it worked out well. Yeah, it did. And, I mean, uh, you'll see they'll take down the cannon at a pittering out on this Tesla. Um, so I mean, eh, it's hard to say. You did lose two to a spring trap that went to that twelve o'clock cannon, but um, the thing is, you still have two golems standing in this core here <laughs> that are about to walk over and tank the Tesla at the perfect moment. I yeah, yeah. 
I, w I noticed that when I was live and uh, I, I know that uh, having those two columns with uh, a clear path to towards the Tesla and having my queen ability, I was fine. Uh, at that point, I realized about the builder set and I was like, okay, I have no troops, uh, but I think I, I'm, I'm right. <laughs> I'm yeah, okay lots of time left. The wall was open for them to just walk right down there. And that's a tree in the bag from a gravy. Nice job, buddy. Thanks, man. <clears throat> so going to show a few of the, the these similar attacks. I mean, I've been talking in recaps about bowlers in the CC and just combining them with sort of traditional Town Hall 9 three-star strats and even non-traditional Town Hall 9 three-star strats. But uh, these are th these three next two attacks, I should say now, are all very similar styles. You're just going to bring three golems. We're jumping into Mikao's replay now on number 20, or 35. Yep. And three golems, right? Same kind of idea. Just let's uh, let's stone this base, get a nice funnel created. And, and that that's actually um, the tutorial Gravy and I were talking about is we're doing a funneling video. And what bringing three golems allows you to do is create a massive funnel to ensure the bowlers go right in behind those golems. And then you get big value, right? You just get one jump down. In this case with Mikhail, he brings two jumps. And you are you have access to almost the whole base, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah that's that exactly what's happening. Uh, yep. uh, if you let me bring some insight to that, yep. I think that what, what uh, Mick, uh, Michael thought when he was doing this attack, it was like, there's a heavy point defenses at the start, then I face this core that I don't know if there's Teslas or not, but um, protecting my bowlers with so many uh, golems uh, lets me open the whole base, like you just said, and uh, face the last uh, point defenses yeah. uh, up there at 12. That Tesla farm pops and starts doing some crazy damage, but once the goal, like the golems are tanking it. So here come the hogs, right, from, uh, you know, start sprinkling it in from 3 o'clock and up to 12. Just going to take those outer point defenses. I find Cad and I were talking about this in one of our base, or Slay My Base episodes. See how many of those long outer compartments what that I, I always lean towards a surgical hog deployment going around in those small compartments because you just know worst comes to worst there's spring traps and if you're smart with your hog deployment you can miss those spring traps completely if you uh, if you take certain buildings down simultaneously right yeah exactly and if eventually if you think about it a little bit if you deploy your golems in a, in a way and you can control their path uh, eventually you can tank for your your hogs and then like they are going untouched inside the base and then you have like seven hogs eight hogs ten hogs running across the base killing everything and and this usually ends up in a three star <laughs> yeah that's gonna be a tree in the bag for uh, Mike go uh what i like he still had three bowlers i'm pretty sure alive at the end of that so if you can get your bowlers to last that long in the raid uh, you're looking yeah. pretty good <laughs> For yeah sure. definitely are all right so let's check out our uh the frying dutchman here caddick number 32 let's go in yep so again, three golems. We've got bowlers in the CC, 21 hogs. Uh, Cad brings two jumps as well, uh, rage and a heal. Goes right in at the queen chamber, poison down nice and quickly, right? Um, another thing we're going to talk about in our funneling episode is just the necessity of preserving your golem's health. Um, and especially when you know from the moment you drop your golem that a queen is going to lock onto it you're you pretty much have to use the poison like you do not want a queen to just go to town on a goal yeah yeah that's exactly what you need to do and also if you let me uh, add something to that is that uh you have to make sure uh what buildings are uh in your way and if you need a lot of uh wizards or not uh, because if you don't, uh, eventually the poison will run out, and uh, you need to try and prevent that if you are, if you can. Yep, it's definitely uh, the high hit point structures, right? You, you need to make note of that. Is there two rows of trash buildings, which a lot of bases can have? Um, are you just going to get through a few army camps, uh, right? You, you got to judge that because you, at the same time as you want to make sure you get that good funnel down, you need to be as efficient as, as possible with it, right? Yep. <clears throat> So CAD, CAD with that double jump, 
because of those small compartments coming in from the sort of eight o'clock section that he did, everything gets controlled to go right up and through the base. And same kind of ideas might go. He got so much of the of the base with the golems in there. They did a ton of tanking. There at this point in the raid now, there's a wizard tower and an air defense. Uh, his hogs end up dying to that bomb there, but doesn't matter. Still has a bunch of bowlers. Has his queen there. Just has to bust through this wall. A couple cleanup wizards coming in from twelve o'clock. Looking good. Same thing though. That builder set. <laughs> WHF yeah. loves those builder sets in the corner. I had that 99% I was showing you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's sad? It's the same thing as you said about your attack. That was a cleanup attack for Pinto. Or, uh, or sorry, Patino. And he had a 99% because of a builder set. And in my planning, I brought two minis for the other two builder sets. And if you watch my replay, you'll see I dropped them. But I had that other mm -hmm. wizard for the builder set. But because my attack went so off plan i just okay. forgot about that fact you know what i'm saying i i just yeah. i had that extra wizard and i was like oh i'm gonna drop it here and it was yeah and then you realize you made it somewhere <laughs> else yeah, it happens all the time yeah. yeah absolutely but uh as you can see cad's just getting these corner huts down goes that de drill and that's tree in the bag beautiful um so Another thing I'm seeing a lot of guys doing, and I'm not the best with this. I mean, I never was a great Lalower. Um, however, guys are really going to town. I mean, I know you're loving the um, uh, sort of the cold-blooded or shattered even. Well, no, it's usually cold-blooded, right, if, you, if you're going that dragon comp. Um, yeah, you can do plenty, plenty of things, but yeah, usually it's called blood when you do dragons. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of guys are going just straight up shattered with bowlers in the CC and, and shattered Lalo and, you know, guys like Lime and Z bear I'm watching just rip it up. So let's check out Lime's hit on 26 right now. Sure. <clears throat> so as you can see, he's going to be bringing the two golems. Now, th again, the only difference is instead of that third Lava Hound, you're bringing bowlers. Now, you have to be careful with this attack because it, it, this one's tricky. I find it needs some finesse. Maybe it's just because I'm not the best Lalo or it just wasn't um, coming to me. But I watch guys practice a lot and you either just smash it or it's a horrible failure. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, which was actually the same with old school Lalo, if you think about it. But um, see this, that it's the same thing. Those jump spells unlocking such large parts of the base. What that's going to allow is these bowlers to jump into the core. And they have access to multiple air defenses. One is already down. And just got to get through this. Fortunately, a couple of them get held up there uh, on that storage. But they're going to take care of that cannon, I think. No, not quite. He ends up losing a couple. And the queen walks too. Wow. Yeah, I think I think he was very greedy with his entry because he wanted to get all four air defenses he and did. basically which he's, he wanted to destroy the whole base with Which just... he's he's getting he's getting three of them though. That's the crazy. He has two hero bowlers there left over. <laughs> they each yeah, get an yeah. air defense and the queen's still walking around the outside with the ability. So hey, let's go ahead. We're gonna path that lava hound right over top the defensive queen. She's going to just chase and lock on to the Hound that's now on the only remaining air defense. And he's got a bunch of balloons coming in. There's even a pup locked on. Just hilarious how this attack worked out. I think she's going to get destroyed by the splash. Yeah, there she goes. Down goes that final air defense. And that's actually the last structure to go. Now, again, Builder's Hut's in the corners. Got to be aware of that, guys. I mean, um, you know, a few of us, obviously, there's lots of time left, but... Yeah, I can make or break a raid for you. Yeah, that's perfect because what, what you were uh, announcing about the funneling video, that's also something that you can incorporate. If you are very efficient on your funneling, you can bring uh, the extra archer or tool to deal with those uh, builder shots. That's yeah. something that you need to think about. For sure. And that's it, right? It, it, that's all it takes as an archer or early on. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can find somewhere where you can sacrifice two or four even army camp space to, to bring a few archers for that cleanup. Absolutely. Um, what did I have next? Oh, this was, uh, let's go to number 19. So <laughs> from what I gather, Logic oh, Gates yeah. was on Discord planning this attack <laughs> with you and Kadic. 
Yep. And then all of a sudden just accidentally hit attack <laughs> prematurely. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. It was hilarious. So um, go ahead, tell the story. Okay, the thing is that uh, we were uh, thinking about uh, how to make this this um, attack more efficient because we had a, a concern that the golem would activate the CC too early, so we needed to plan for it and send a wizard here and careful about the builder's head. You may need a troop or or, or two here and there, and maybe you want to use uh, rather than two jump spells. Maybe it's better to use another heal spell. And we were talking about this, and Logic Bit was like, "Yeah, I kind of like this kind this adjustment and this other thing I don't like. I'm doing a friendly challenge now with someone in the clan, and somehow brain fart moment." And um, and he is like, dude, I just hit attack. Like I'm live right now. Uh, what, what, what? I thought it was in a friendly challenge. And we we're like, okay, keep calm. You have your your idea in your yeah. hand, in your, in your head. Just try and, and stick to the plan because it was a, a good plan. We we're let's, just perfecting let's it. Let's jump. So. Let's jump in right now, and we're gonna check this out live. It's awesome. <laughs> so he did not plan to go in here at this moment, but he's like, screw it. This is how it's going down. So he ended up with the two baby dragons, right? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly um, what we're talking about. Same thing, though. The stone the stone go hobo, uh, it is super powerful. And you, start, you look at these bases, and, I mean, I know if you were looking at this base, Grady, I think you would probably opt towards your dragon attack, maybe. Um, yep. Because you love the, the, one thing we we're talking about is a lot of clans because of the new sort of meta of bases, they're relying on attackers not being very good with air, um, whether it's dragons or a lalo, and they're leaving these air defenses very exposed to things like walks and things like uh, any anything. Right? You, you can pretty much you could get that with hogs from the outside if you wanted to. Yeah. So. Uh, but some, but a lot of guys aren't necessarily comfortable with that. A huge piece of attacking too is you need to be comfortable with the troops you're using and know the deployment and just be be happy, you know. Yeah. Happy and comfortable. Always be comfortable about your attacks. That's something that you always need to bring when you are you are doing a, a serious war attack. Uh, like you have to be confident about it and don't, if you are not sure about it just practice it before with your clanmates in, in different friendly challenges now that we have the friendly challenge use it to your advantage and, and be confident with it you don't need to spend a, a, an attack for a, an actual war to get confident with troops and you know what I actually liked about Logic's attack here it, considering how he went in unexpectedly he was so patient and I think his hog deployment saved the raid because he was just so patient and surgical with, with every every uh, hog he put down and they all end up meeting up at the end there. So just really good job. Both ab ability uh, on both his heroes are still active as well. I thought that was uh, that was cool. I ended up really just smashing the base. <laughs> Very good one. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, fast forward that. That's tree in the bag for Logic Beats. Um, so what do we got next here? Oh, Z Bear. So here's this other uh, Gola Lobo. Let's jump in now on that one. Let's go. What I thought was interesting, I interest. I, I want to know what was the Valk for? What the Valk was? I'm assuming to get the Golem to the wall as soon as possible. I mean, I don't. I wasn't 100% sure what the one Valkyrie he brought was for, but... <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest <laughs> no I was kidding. getting cute with it. <laughs> yeah, but hey, cool. It worked out. Uh, ended up clearing that space real quickly. Got the rage down the kill squad. Uh, Poison was just on. That dragon almost got out of it. The dra baby dragon goes down there. Um, gets really good push into the base. Two air defenses are down, which is absolutely what he's looking for in this attack, right? Yeah, yeah. Always, uh, G Bear always looks for a queen kill and two air defenses at least. And if yep. you can get something else, then great, right? You got a sweeper yep. out of it. That's awesome. But you can see still his queen and bowlers are in there smashing stuff, and the Lalo portion is already half done. That air defense number three goes down. 
everything's gonna work pathing over to that expo just got to kind of finish that section and he holds on to four balloons for this back end thought that was perfect the queen steps up and takes care of air defense number four so he probably could have just kept those loons for cleanup he does keep one which was like i don't know that that's what used to kill me with lalo's all the time you get a little overzealous when you're you start dropping all your balloons and then you don't save one for cleanup and they're just so slow but yeah but see where he's awesome controlling he's those loons man unbelievable absolutely unbelievable awesome to have that guy in 2.0 for sure so tree in the bag for z nice job man He's pretty much been smashing, like, it, it, maybe not necessarily first attempt, but he can uh, pretty much force that attack onto almost any base design that I've seen. And yep. eventually, after an attack or two, he's going to get it. <clears throat> um, what I have next. So let's jump up. We got the two TV, uh, 10 versus 10s. So check Polly J's Dragons out on number 15 here. So level one infernos, but uh, max walls. I always give respect to these guys. Like, how patient do you have to be to max your walls first? <laughs> like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I could never do that. I got all my lavas, and I'm like, all right, I'm going up. <laughs> <laughs> so suicide king goes in here, uh, basically from the ten o'clock. Couple wizards keep things going towards that wall. Opens up the wall with the breakers. All fine and dandy. That king is almost like a golem himself. Can't wait till I have a max king. But out comes that clan castle. Poison goes down nice and quickly. He's got the double zaps he's going to use here in a moment. Uh, brings a rage spell. Basically fans these dragons out from 12 to 3. Uh, gets good, just good pushes. They're, they're just going to sweep straight across this base. Um, and keep in mind these four zaps. There they go. Two zaps, two zaps. Down goes those two air defense. So... He's got the one air defense to worry about there that uh, he doesn't quite get the pathing he wanted, but doesn't matter. Gets that rage spell down, and down it goes. There's no air defenses left. Those level one infernos are just not going to be enough to stop whatever it was. I think three, eight dragons or something like that. I believe it was nine. Nine dragons, yeah. yeah. Uh, still has six balloons in the pocket as well, keep in mind, and a hay spell. Um, I think he's going to save those for the, uh, the back end over the cannon. Oh, here they go. They're on the they're coming in from the nine o'clock. The first two balloons, at least. Just being nice and patient. PJ's just just been awesome for us. Yep, and he really likes using those dragons, and he he does it at the TH10 level, which is amazing. Yep. It's a different game. What I've noticed now that I've been getting a little more into TH10, the level three infernos do make quite a substantial difference. Um, like I find you tier what attack you choose based on the guy's Inferno Tower levels. If he's got one or two, you ah, that's not entirely true, but um, just things like dragon attacks are going to be very beastly against uh, against lower level Inferno Towers is, is what I'm saying. Um, yep. So Tree and Peg Polly, that was clutch. We definitely needed that attack and plus this one here by our girl Jamie going in on number 12. Uh, were you involved in this plan? I'm afraid who helped her plan this. I know uh, she was talking. Uh, no, earlier. I think it was Kavik. Uh, she and... Probably Zerds. Well, Zerds, yeah, Zerds. Yeah. So brings the... Uh, I forget there is a name for a four golem attack. I forget what it is, though. There's the avalanche attack that we do in TH9. But isn't that five? I don't know if that's what... Oh, oh, yeah, it's five. But sometimes you can change it up and add uh, something different to uh, add some, um, like, DPS or something. Someone wa someone at one point, I remember, because someone at, at a Town Hall 9, before the avalanche existed, I remember doing a recap and someone used a four golem attack. And someone said there is actually a name for it, but... Uh, Anyhow, you can see Jamie gets pretty good push into the base, triggers that DGB, which was just perfect, just got it just in time. Starts sprinkling these hogs now from the sort of 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Uh, heal spell goes down where they all end up meeting up under this arch tower and air defense. So freeze spell goes down. Let's freeze that inferno tower just long enough to let these hogs get on over to it. Now, uh, they do eat a bomb to the face, but the heal spell, because the inferno's frozen, keeps them alive just long enough. They get that Tesla taken down, and there's too many. There's 
the, there's just too many hogs left over even though the skellies are on them you know they've taken down a big piece of this base already the queen is now working her way around the 12 o'clock getting that cleanup done another thing i talk about grady a lot of my recaps i'm sure you know is the importance of getting the cleanup started somewhat early in some fashion um a lot of times i find at town hall 10 the success of the the, t, the 10 versus 10s comes to if you can manage to get a certain part of your army doing a section of the cleanup right after the entry um and then they end up meeting up with the other half of the army kind of at the end you know you, you, you kill the base for you can burn the camel from two ends kind of thing right yeah yeah you have to look for those synergies what i liked about this like i just noticed it that somewhat is similar that when when you are doing your um your go your go ball or whatever attacks in, in th9 level uh like uh, the stoned ones when we send the golems in like she took advantage of it beautifully but because when the golems were in she sent those hogs for the for kind of the back end and they were all protected so then they met like in a swarm way on that inferno tower that has no chance against so many hogs that survived because of the of the golem she took full advantage right. of it and all yeah. those initial hogs she deployed there was only a couple air def or sorry a couple point defense at best targeted in them everything else was targeting the golems in the core yeah. so yeah. they stay protected right down to that section where she healed kept them healed up froze the inferno it was just like bit by bit and away you go beautiful so, planning yeah really nice job great hit jamie right let's check out our beast man uh south fence on number three here so 36 minors 10 bowlers pretty standard these days at town hall 11 uh the miners are just ridiculous um in a in certain certain sense like you see how he just immediately drops the jump spell gets the golems out ahead so the eagle the the, the, the important thing about the golems guys is you want the see the eagle actually targeted that minor those miners at first but you want the golems to draw the eagle hits so then you're not going to lose your miners as much you need to still think about funneling right you need things to go to that town hall and through the core but the fact that his heroes are there are going to suck everything right there, like the bowlers and south fences heroes. So it really doesn't matter. You can kind of use, like I was just talking about, the miners to just start the cleanup from either side of the base. And it's just, it's a ring base, right? So they're just going to go around in a circle. If you can get your heroes and your bowlers to go through the core and then your miners all on the outside, which happens to also be not where the Inferno Towers are, so you can just keep them healed. You're looking pretty good here as South Fan says. Just a beastly attack though. These miners are crazy. I'm interested to see what the September update is gonna bring for us. You have any insight on that? Well, uh, we were talking about it and definitely there's something that needs to be done about those miners because they are just, uh, just they burrow and nothing targets them and they just live forever and forever. And when you have a critical mass like that, it's very difficult to stop from a base building perspective, or at least that's what, what's, uh, what's been said these days. Yep. Yeah. So I'm maybe open. a new defense? I don't know. But in the same token, I think they're sort of on the right path in sort of diversifying the CC, or sorry, the, the town hall levels. Like, I, I agree, an 11 should be able to bully a 10 fairly easily, right? But yeah. they got to find that balance because the thing is before really they just had to focus on 10 and 9 and 8 just kind of was a byproduct i found when clan with with, with yeah. regards to clan wars but now that you're thinking about town hall 10, 11 10 and 9 you know i don't want to nerf bowlers or miners to the point where 10s can't triple 10s because that's not what we want but at the same token we need to realize that bowlers max bowlers in a town hall 9 cc are just so ridiculous that it's it's taking over what it is basically saying that town hall nine it would be silly almost to not bring bowlers in your cc just because of how powerful they are and we don't want to get into that tunnel vision of using one troop always at a certain town hall level right yeah that that's not something that you want to do like it's not fun then if that's uh what in in the end it's it's used but uh yeah i think that that they have some work to do on that level supercell that is uh, but I'm, I'm sure they will find a way to balance it and to make it uh, 
like not as powerful as it is right now. Those miners are just ridiculous at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure I'm sure something will come up. And uh, well, we will need to adjust, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just hope it's subtle. It's not. It's not like you know when they nerf witches and now no one uses witches, right? Because that's not what we want. Yeah. We want we want every town hall level to have certain options, but we also want it to be somewhat challenging. We don't want to be able to just go from nine o'clock to six o'clock and spam your miners and have a fairly good chance at actually getting a three star against a, a crazy tough base, right? Like, you know, there's got we there's got to be some planning involved, especially at that level, right? So exactly. Anyhow, I'm going to call it uh, a night here, but uh, thanks, Gravy. I know it's pretty late out there in Barcelona, so... Pretty um, late it is. Yeah, so I'll let <laughs> you get to bed, but thanks for coming out, buddy. Uh, anytime. Thanks I'd, for uh, having me. Yeah, I'd love to have you anytime. Uh, it always makes recaps a little more interesting, and uh, that's why I love doing the videos with Caddick, too, because it's like I'm just sitting there chatting with my friend. It really, you know, it, it, it's so it's such a different thing when you're by yourself and just talking to a screen and no one's responding to you or talking. So it really makes it more interac or interactive. I appreciate it. So um, that'll do it here for your wisdom from Wiser, though, guys. Just trying to help it bag that next tree star. Till then, we're out.